Here's the message. Stop closing sales and start providing value or lose to price. At a recent seminar in Kitchener, Ontario, an hour north of Toronto, for those of you without Google Maps at the moment, James Pearlie of Pearly Consulting Group came up to me during a break and said, I have a new closing method. I said, great, what is it? We beat our customers over the head with a value stick until they close us and ask us to buy. We don't have brochures, and the whole meeting is about how exactly we would deliver massive value to the client, all done in a friendly, professional manner. We give the client full strategic map of how they profit if we're hired. They buy because they believe we're capable of implementing the plan that we've offered. I just smiled. James continued, at the end of our sales conversation, we provided our customers with so much value and perceived value that they asked questions like, okay, what's the next step or how do we get started? Now, note well here. This is a pretty interesting concept when you consider that 99%, and I may be a little low on that number of salespeople, you included, are trying to figure out some manipulative way of closing the sale or asking for the sale or worse, wondering when the best time to close is. Huh? Think about it. Is it more powerful for you to ask for the sale or for the customer wanting to buy? Is it more powerful for you to ask for the sale or for the customer to ask, when can we get started? Your big question at this moment is, okay, how do I do that? But the bigger question is, are you willing to jump off the product pitch and price comparison proposal horse and buggy and onto the value rocket ship? Value is a combination of what you offer and what you perceive is in favor of the prospective customer combined with what the prospective customer actually perceives is in favor of them. Sometimes those are two very different perceptions. What is your value proposition? Do you even have one? What are you saying to the prospect that goes beyond what you do and how you do it and what your product or service is and how it works? Hard question, harder answers, but be aware there are 9.5 key areas where value can be perceived. Number one, ease of doing business with you. Number two, ease of contact with you and anyone in your company. Number three, ease of use after purchase. Number four, increase in productivity for the customer. Number five, availability of service when the customer needs it. Number six, Boost in customer morale after product or service is installed. Number seven, reasonably affordable and market price aligned. Not the cheapest, rather the best value. Number eight, additional profit to the customer, not savings of money. How does the customer really monetarily benefit from overall use? Number nine, assurance to the customer and the perception by the customer that there's a perfect fit. Number 10, assurance that there's no risk in doing business with you or purchasing, otherwise stated as their peace of mind, total reduction or elimination of their perceived risk in doing business with you. Without this, the first nine points don't matter. And number 10.5, continued value messages to help the customer after the purchase has been made. Now here's the sales reality. All prospects and customers want to know the same thing. What's in it for me? How do I profit? And of course, how much is it? When these elements are part of an overall value presentation, you, the seller, wins. If the customer needs it, wants it, and feels there's a fit, then they will compare perceived value with price. Most people buy what they perceive is best for themselves. They first look at the value and the quality. How does this suit me? How does this feel? How comfortable with this and this salesperson am I? Or better stated, what's the fit? Then they justify the price or not. The decision to buy is made emotionally and then justified logically. But beware. Keep in mind that what I have just told you has nothing to do with your literature, your sales pitch, your sales techniques, your product description. It has everything to do 
with how the customer perceives things will be or perceives things will happen after they take ownership or after they get started. Here's the price reality. Don't worry about a price objection. Price is just a customer's way of telling you that value is lacking or not evident.